Development or own stay, you can see uh, is contributing to all these healthy sales that we see in, in this year itself. And of course, uh, now that COVID is, has kind of eased we, and the borders being open, you can see we do see a gradual return of foreign buyers, especially into our central regions of Singapore. So you can see the bar chart over here um, in the light blue, we can see that's what happened in 2021. Right, and the darker grey over here, you can see um, um, 2022, which is this year. Uh, definitely, we see more foreigners coming back into the market, especially in the core central region. Um, uh, this has definitely, with the borders opening, uh, has contributed to some of the sales that we have in especially the central core region and of course uh, our city fringe RCR. And also, uh, if, uh, we do see some foreigners buying into our outskirts as well in the OCR region. These are just some of the news that happened this year, right? Uh, we do see lots of new China tech firms, lots of jobs creation uh, coming into Singapore. Um, and we can see the competitive the competitiveness, uh, Singapore being um, seen as the one of the top key global financial centre, even overtaking Hong Kong. Um, and many um, people are making Singapore the office hub. It's interesting that day I was uh, listening to one of my fellow colleagues uh, seminar and he was sharing that uh, in the past, you know, to set up an office in Singapore for foreigners, it only cost them about maybe two point. They only need the funds of 2.5 million and now they actually need to bring in a funds of 20 million before they can actually set up uh, in Singapore but we do see them still coming very strongly right into the Singapore uh, uh, market itself and of course with all uh, these foreigners setting up offices it, it means creation of jobs uh, it means more people uh, renting and, and even buying into the Singapore market itself. Uh, and in quarter two itself, we can see a spike in luxury property deals, uh, definitely more in our central, our core central um, properties. We see lots of bu uh, buyers coming back, uh, foreigners. And these are just some of the, um, the mega deals that we, we see you know, in, in our core central region. Um, those of you who like to eat snacks, you know, the, the Wang Wang snacks, um, uh, the, the, their boss, right, um, actually bought the whole uh, property, the 20 units at Eden, right? Um, you can see them setting up their office, their headquarters here, right? Uh, not too long ago, we see Chinese uh, buyers buying 20 units at Kenny Hill Pierce. This is another integrated develop, uh, development that we have at Clark Key. Right, uh, for over $85 million. And this is uh, on the right over here, we have Park Nova that have transacted more than $5,000 per square foot. You can see uh, this large format. Units are drawing uh, very strong interest from our Chinese friends. Now let's look at, uh, we, you know, we, we have so many people buying the Singapore market. Let's, let's, let's take a look at uh, some of the property price index of some of the key cities uh, around us and this is kindly shared by our UOB friends. Um, uh, actually post-COVID, if you look at 2020, that's when COVID happened, right? Uh, actually post-COVID, you can see uh, many of the key cities uh, that property price index have um, actually appreciated uh, very, very uh, sharply or a lot. Uh, but look at Singapore, although, you know, we uh, the property price index in Singapore is increasing, but we still see, uh, as compared to our fellow friends in New Zealand, so, you know, in China, in Hong Kong, um, in Australia, and all over the world, uh, we do see that in Singapore itself, there are still definitely uh, value buys. But most importantly, why, the reason why I wanted to show you this um, uh, table here, or this chart here tonight, is definitely to let all of uh, us know that even amidst the increasing price index in Singapore, uh, there's definitely not a bubble um, that that is that is forming and and whatever that's happening in the Singapore property market is definitely sustainable, um, especially with all the very prudent policies that our government has put in place, right? Um, definitely, we there there are still value buys that you can actually search for, and of course tonight uh, I'm going to give you some recommendations on the areas that you can look into. Uh, now, so now let's examine a little bit about our, our Singapore property market. You can see uh, the light blue um, over here are some of the major 
um, happenings around the world, you know, some of our cooling measures, one, and how long it actually, uh, you, you know, even if property price did, did dip a little, it didn't take too long for them to bounce back. Uh, and uh, I think that's the beauty of Singapore, you know. Uh, we, we actually uh, have a very sustainable uh, market to keep our property market very, very healthy. And, and, and actually, let's take a look at um, what happened in 2021. Uh, I've boxed it up here for your easy viewing. So we actually have an overall increase of about 106 um, uh, in terms of increase of property price index in Singapore. And uh, over here you can see in the landed and non-landed segment and of course in the different um, areas of CCR, RCR and OCR, we have seen a positive increase um, in price index itself, right, uh, in the whole entire year of 2021. Uh, and of course that is uh, post-COVID, right, um, I think in 2021, Things start to get back into uh, the norm, and and even in in COVID itself, I would feel that our property price actually didn't really dip that much. You can see over here in year 2020, uh, 20 itself, right? Um, it took only like it, it only took like one quarter, and 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 there we go back up again. Uh, and of course, uh, I guess since everyone is here with me tonight, we're definitely quite keen to know what's happening in the quarter three, which just ended. Uh, quarter to quarter, we see an increase in about 3.4% right over here, uh, our, our overall property price index. Uh, actually, tonight we're going to talk a little bit and examine a little bit more on, on the, the central areas. And you can see actually the central areas is growing very healthily, but not at too fast a rate. Uh, uh, which means to say that we can definitely still see a lot of good value buys um, in, in the core central region itself. We're going to talk a little bit in rental market. I think uh, rental market gone bananas, right? Um, so this actually uh, yesterday, uh, I think the day before yesterday, uh, there was an article that says that our rental market in Singapore has gone bananas. Uh, and we uh, we have seen like uh, our HDB rents, our condo rents uh, continue to increase. And you can see uh, actually post-COVID once uh, things are back into normal. Right, the price, the rental price index has ran really quite a bit, and and you can see over here. I mean, uh, in I mean, I myself, I do a little bit of rental as well. Um, and nowadays, uh, if you have a listing on hand, you know, we can have as many or 20, 30 uh, viewings in one go, and it's so hot until um, I think uh, people are snapping up apartment, uh, even via video viewing, or not even visiting them. And, and of course, how does this play a part, right, uh, in, in uh, your choice in your pro uh, property purchase? Uh, let's take a look also later on this and where in Singapore has rental risen the most, right? We can also take a look. So with everything happening with, you know, all rising interest rates and, and, and we start to ask ourselves why um, sales is still so brisk and, and, and what is driving this? purchase by all our our buyers in the market uh, with rising interest rates why and and the question is like what and why and what are they buying right so uh, of course tonight uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, where you can look into right um, that has good value for you to take a look uh, before we go we do that right uh, this is another um, chart to show that actually post COVID itself we still have continued to inch upwards as well as our new launches. So today we're going to examine a little bit right into the most prime areas of Singapore called uh, CCR for short, which is called Central Region. This is a this is a map or a picture of where our CCR um, segment lies on. Right, actually in the core Central Region region, it includes mainly prime areas. Um, in Singapore and usually when we talk about prime areas we talk a little bit about district 9, 10, 11 uh, we can see that in this area where my high, my laser pointer is and, and of course a little bit on downtown core where district 7, the Bugis area and and of course the Sentosa area that's where CCR is uh, segment is located and definitely why is it called CCR because it's really where most of the high end and the luxury homes are found uh, in Singapore, and why is so? Why is CCR so attractive to, to locals and to foreigners? 
Uh, in in the recent quarters or so later, I'll be showing you in a, uh, a bit, uh, some charts we see narrowing prices between uh, the different segments of CCR, RCR and OCR. Uh, and of course, early on, you see the brisk sales that we have uh, and the prices that are being uh, transacted uh, at the OCR, they're definitely setting record prices, even prices up to 2,500 to 5x XPSF. Uh, that, that really means um, we really can find uh, very good buys in CCR itself. Uh, and in terms of uh, increase uh, in price index, right, uh, if we talk about CCR price index, RCR price index, OCR, um, comparatively with our counterparts in the RCR and OCR, our CCR price increase definitely, but not as much, only marginally, and and that what that is what makes it very attractive in the current moment. And we do see a lot of safe entry prices, uh, prices quantum that's very very close to RCR and OCR. Let's take a look. The gap between uh, our, our friends in, in the city fringe location, RCR, let's, let's, let's examine a little bit more. And of course, it, let's, uh, we, this chart of course has shown you the gap between um, the prices of uh, the core central region versus the rest of core central region from twin, uh, year 2000. And of course, I think definitely we are more keen to find out a little bit more uh, what's happening now in 2022. And you can take a look over here where my uh, laser pointer is the gap itself between the CCR and RCR uh, in the latest quarter of uh, Q3 this year you can see the gap is only uh, about on average $500 per square foot and is at one of its lowest okay um, and again that's a re one of the key reasons why tonight we are looking at um, CCR having uh, good value buys uh, having uh, choices and, and definitely undervalued in, um, in comparison to the fringe and outskirts. Uh, only a very, very small gap here between um, the core central region and RCR. So let's take a look at how much percentage change um, there, there, uh, by region in terms of unit prices uh, itself. You can see uh, percentage change from in 2021 itself in the core central region, uh, CCR, uh, we increased marginally by 3.5%. Uh, and in RCR, we increased 14.7%. And definitely leading us right in OCR is uh, they really ran quite a bit. You can see uh, increased by 27%. Um, that's the reason why, again, uh, the marginal increase in CCR uh, will we'll, we'll, we'll find a very, very good uh, value buys at this current moment. And this table actually puts help to uh, give you an, a summary, right, on the outlook predictions that we have in uh, some of our new projects in Singapore itself, right? And you can see again, this is um, uh, classified in the different regions of CCR, RCR, and OCR, right? Uh, in 2022, uh, you can see that our counterparts in OCR and RCR has actually risen quite a fair bit, uh, while uh, our core central region. It's pretty marginal, right? So we're looking at an average PSF of 2008 to 2009, and we're talking about average wise, okay? Uh, average in terms of uh, PSF in the CCR. Uh, so definitely, um, you we see just now, you know, in the CCR regions, as we even ran as much as five thousand dollars per square foot. Um, um, definitely, in the average of 2008 2009, if we can find something that is in the CCR in this region. Uh, is considered very reasonable and very safe entry. So why why are prices in uh, in CCR so resilient? So we all know that you know in the whole of Singapore, uh, the core central region in the prime areas uh, itself, um, in in we definitely see limited supply, right? In the core central region, and replacement cost is a little bit higher. Why do I say the replacement cost is a little bit higher? Uh, in the core central region, of course, we do see uh, uh, profile bias, uh, a higher profile bias, and 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 some of these buyers they are multiple property owners, you know, uh, and if they are to sell the property, uh, they are multiple property, they might still run into, um, you know, the additional buyer stamp duty, and that makes it difficult for them to replace, and some of them might, you know, choose to hold 
instead of selling uh, uh, their, their current property. And that's why uh, supply is pretty much uh, quite tight in, in the CCR itself. Uh, in, a, in a bit, I'll show you how much uh, uh, the CCR rental price index has increased and in fact it has increased quite significantly. A uh, very interesting fact that we have, you know, uh, between the 99 leasehold property in CCR and uh, versus the freehold property, uh, there's a narrowing price gap. Now, in the, in the past itself, uh, we do see a premium in freehold properties, usually about 15 to 20 percent. Uh, but in the recent uh, um, months, in the recent quarters, we see that uh, this gap itself has actually narrowed quite a bit and, and that makes uh, freehold property really very interesting uh, to, to consider, which we will take a look uh, right after this. And of course, we earlier on we we seen um, uh, we see more foreign buyers coming to the market itself. And of course, for foreign buyers, um, definitely their key segment that they usually buy into is call central region. Uh, and of course, with the borders opening, we see lots of them coming to to buy properties in CCR. And uh, one very interesting fact, uh, uh, one of my buyer was. Uh, asking me uh, how come the developer in CCR segment you're not increasing prices as fast as those you know in the other segments now that's because um, these developers who holding uh, uh, inventory in CCR they have actually bought the land uh, some time back and uh, some time back of course the land prices were a little bit lower and so they are not so in a rush you know to, to, to increase the price or they can they have the luxury to actually hold the price a little bit uh, more uh, in terms of uh, the increment uh, speed so as promised this is a chart to show uh, that CCR rental is on a rise uh, for the non landed home rentals uh, since 2017 you can see uh, and uh, just the different colors uh, line graph over here signifies the different sizes right of the unit unit sizes that's inside CCR uh, so you can see from the smallest unit between 200 to 400 square feet um, some smaller ones probably our one bedroom and studio units right up to our big large format sizes of 2000 and 2005 uh, you can see no matter which uh, unit size uh, whether maybe small or the large format ones you can see a very healthy increase in terms of uh, rental index uh, for units in the CCR and that makes it also very um, uh, attractive you know if today uh, you are looking to buy something in in the core central region for investment um, this is a very good time where because the rental uh, market is really vibrant and, and the returns uh, you know the rental yield is definitely um, very 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 uh, healthy at this current moment and of course the other uh, the other topic that um, you, you know that uh, if today you're looking to buy something in in CCR uh, is to consider the tenure of the property that you might want to consider. Uh, is it a freehold property? Is it a 99 leasehold property? You can see um, there is a narrowing uh, price gap. Uh, as mentioned earlier on, usually between the in the same segment itself, between freehold and 99, usually there's a 15 to 20% um, premium, right? Uh, however, very interestingly, uh, this has shrunk by a lot. Okay, a lot. We can see over here in 2022 itself, and of course, I box it up for your easy reading. Um, especially in the latest quarter, you can see the prices in, in CCR freehold versus the 99 leasehold counterparts. It's only a difference of $105 per square foot. And um, with the gap being so narrow, okay, with the gap being so narrow, definitely now. Uh, I've told my, my own buyers, uh, my own buyers who are looking to buy, uh, it's definitely a very, very good time for you to look into freehold properties uh, in the market in CCR um, because the gap between the, uh, the freehold and the 99 is at its all time low. So over here, just a quick overview uh, to share with everyone, right? Uh, one of the key reasons why you should be looking into CCR as well, uh, because we do have a lot of inventory, uh, not really a lot, but of course, compared uh, to our city fringe and outskirts itself, we can see that uh, we have quite uh, 
a good inventory left for you to choose from and that's one of the reasons uh, why you can see our price index have increased marginally with with um, with good options and choices for you to choose from whereby prices are still very palatable and the entry prices are still very safe I want to talk a little bit about freehold now right um, and those of you who are who knows uh, freehold land are very very hard to come by they are rare honestly right uh, and government has ceased to offer freehold land for sale Okay, I'm not so sure uh, how many of you know this. A government don't sell any more freehold land. Uh, so the only way, right, um, that um, developer can get hold of freehold land, okay, is buy it on block. And that makes freehold really scarce. Uh, and on block is definitely uh, not easy, especially um, in CCR and, and, and especially in... Uh, land large land plot whereby you know you, um, the developers need to or the agent themselves need to call the uh, the on block agent themselves need to convince more than 80 percent of the current existing owners to say yes to sell uh, and of course for freehold um, um, stock right or freehold land is set to decline further as future launches uh, upcoming launches in uh, upcoming in in the last quarter of 2022, even in 2023, whatever that we're going to be seeing launch, are mainly going to be 99 leasehold. So freehold is definitely is going to be uh, very rare to come by. Um, something that you should look into uh, if you are looking to purchase your next property. Uh, and of course, we talk about freehold being how uh, very rare and very scarce. Uh, freehold property near MRTs even rarer right uh, even rarer and even more scarce and of course if you look at uh, this uh, pie chart over here uh, in fact freehold properties located within walking distance to the MRT they are really limited and they only accounts for about 13 percent of the total stock island wide um, and of course for freehold properties that you know you can walk to the MRT you know within 10 minutes I think that is probably the tolerance level of uh, local Singaporeans um, is something uh, quite uh, good to actually consider uh, for investment as well. Now, of course, tonight we're going to give some um, recommendations, right? Uh, tonight we're going to spend uh, just a short time to introduce uh, this property in District 10 called Leiden Green. This is a, a CCR core central region property in that's freehold that's in District 10. Um, and of course, I'm one of the ICs. Uh, we have a lot of choice unit left for you to consider for own stay and investment with very, very safe entry prices, something that you can look into. I'll give you a quick project in overview uh, because you can always talk to your Propnex uh, consultant who have invited you for tonight's event uh, to show you, to, to invite you down to our very beautiful sales gallery right on the actual site. Um, so without further, further ado, I'm going to in, introduce uh, Leiden Green. This is actually... Um, uh, developed by co-developed by two very very mega developers called MCL Land and Yeno Land. I will I will share a little bit more about them in a bit. Um, our address uh, this is a prestigious address to, to own okay to uh, Leiden Heights, uh, right by the good class bungalows, and of course I mentioned this is in D10. We have seven blocks all together, six hundred and thirty eight units freehold. And what is really, really uh, attractive is this property is building on time, on stage, and it's going to be uh, estimated to complete end of next year. So your wait is not going to be too long like some of the newer properties whereby you need to wait for about four years for, for keys collection. Of course, the, the large, free, the large uh, land size that we have uh, slight, uh, close to 320,000 square feet. This is really rare. How rare is this? I will share with you in a bit. Um, um, in Singapore, we don't have so many uh, condominiums or so many developments that has uh, comparative land size like Leiden Green. Uh, investors will be very, very happy, right? Because in Leiden Green, we are a full condo facilities development, yet our maintenance fee starts as low as $240 to only 440 we imagine um, this fixed cost is so low it's definitely going to enhance your rental you if you decide to rent it out okay let's look a little, let's look at um, 
the location itself for Leiden Green now. One second. Okay, let me just put on the one second, yeah. Okay, let's look at the location itself now. Okay, so as mentioned, Leiden Green is located um, in District 10. You can see over here, very large land plot. Okay, uh, right next to the GCBs over here. Uh, well, we, we can walk to actually the MRT station for Farrer. It takes you around seven to eight minutes, depending on how, how fast you walk. Right, uh, and along the way, you can find a local, uh, quite a famous market over here at Empress Road, whereby you can do your local marketing, your web marketing, and you can walk to Holland Village around 12 to 13 minutes. Uh, we are very near to actually um, the key iconic landmarks in Singapore, like Holland Village, if you are a very lifestyle person. Uh, Holland Village is just a short walk away, and um, Botanical Gardens as well. Dempsey Hill, if you like to wine and dine, is uh, quite a short distance away and of course six to seven minutes brings you to Orchard. Uh, at Leiden Green itself, uh, we have uh, five blocks uh, out of seven blocks as within one kilometer to Nanyang Primary School. This is good news for parents. Uh, young parents were looking to, to, to actually enroll their kids uh, into the Bukit Timah stretch of prestigious schools. We are very near this whole entire stretch of uh, schools that you, you might want to put your kids to. Investors uh, alert, we are very, very close to One North, you know, where the, um, uh, the, the, the researchers, the scientists, the A-star, uh, the, the headquarters for Grab, Shopee, Dyson, they are all two stops, two MRT stops away, okay, from Eden Green itself. And Leiden Green itself, because of the fact that it's uh, very near to Holland Village, uh, which is undergoing some uh, new plans, which I'll share in a bit. Um, they like this area, they like the lifestyle. Um, we see a lot of international expats renting in this area and that's the reason why um, uh, investors looking to buy a unit for, for investment in Leiden Green can, can, expect a, can expect a very good tenant profile to tap on uh, around this area itself. And of course, as mentioned, this uh, development is developed by MCL Land. Um, large portfolio in Singapore internationally. They are actually uh, a Hong Kong land company, part of the Jardin Medicine Group. They are uh, a very uh, strong developer inter internationally. And in Singapore itself, uh, they definitely, if you hear about MCL, they are very famous in terms of quality. And this time around, they are partnering Yen Lot Land, uh, who is a listed company in Singapore. Uh, Yen Lot is uh, very, very famous for luxury developments. Uh, and, and I think it's really apt uh, these two big developers have come together to join hands to develop Leiden Green and these are some of their portfolios. Okay. And just now I was mentioning about the land size, right? Um, in Singapore, uh, we don't see many developments that is more than 300,000 square feet. Uh, we have that at Leiden Green. Uh, and this is how rare it is because we only have less than 5% of the developments in Singapore that is actually above 300,000 square feet. And actually what's really interesting is only 0 0.32 of such developments of such sizes are located in the prime core central region in District 9 and 10. And these are just some of the developments, uh, the not so many uh, with the large land size. And if you look through this whole list itself, of course, I'm not going to go through itself. Uh, these are the developments that are very popular and even with time they have done very well in terms of rental in trans transactions volume. Uh, in terms of sale transaction, uh, they are, have been going strong uh, all this while. And prime district developments, uh, and I really want to say with expensive land plots, big land plots are highly sought after and they enjoy really strong demand from tenants uh, as well as uh, uh, rent high rental yield. 
uh, for these developments with large land plot, all of us love facilities, especially post COVID. Uh, early on, I mentioned a little bit how close we are to Holland Village. Um, I will I will show you in a bit how close we are um, in terms of uh, the location itself, right? Let's take a look how close we are. This is the drone shot of Leiden Green. Okay, you can see over here, right at the back, these are the GCBs, uh, the good class bungalow areas that we have, right? And we have the MRT over here. And Holland Village is right at this part. You can see, it's right on my right hand side over here. Okay, right, and you can see actually Botanical Gardens Dempsey Hill on here. Okay, so this area itself uh, is a very matured area with a very good connectivity and amenities. And yet at the same time, those of you who have been to Holland Village recently, uh, you will be able to see that in this area itself, uh, we have um, uh, new transformation, new new developments coming right over here, new retail, new commercial, and uh, also some offices coming into this area, which means uh, more jobs. Right, more jobs creation means more tenants. So uh, that's actually good news for our investors. Right, before I show you some of the very attractive prices of the units and the star buy units that we have at Eden Green, let's take a look at uh, some of the prices of the new projects that we have in District 9 and 10, maybe freehold and leasehold in the last six months. Uh, we will take a look over here uh, from Park Nova, which is the D10 property, Avenir, Pullman, Heights, Sloan, Perfect 10, Juniper, Van Holland, Irwell, which is a 99, and of course, Leland Green, and One Holland Village, which is also uh, uh, very near to us, which is a 99 leasehold property. So the reason why I'm showing you this is to show you that uh, Leland Green definitely have very good entry prices in terms of average per, per square foot is very palatable uh, compared to the rest of the other counterparts that we have in the same area uh, of the freehold uh, new launches, as well as even compared to the 99 uh, op options that we have, you know, like a well and one Holland Village, you can see the prices are very, very close. And that's the reason why I mentioned earlier on, with this very narrow gap between um, the leasehold and the freehold properties, definitely a very good, uh, those of you looking to look to buy a freehold property, uh, definitely a very good time at this current moment. Uh, you can see our average PSF at Eden Green is only 2008, right? And we have transacted as high as 3133. Look at the sales volume in the past six months of Eden Green. How healthy the, the sales uh, and, and brisk and how popular it has been in Eden Green in the last six months. 107 in terms of volume. This gives you a little bit, uh, again, okay, of uh, the sales performance of Leading Green versus our other Lux projects in 2022. And you can see us leading the leading the way with hundred uh, in the whole of uh, uh, 2022, 153 units compared to all our counterparts, uh, other launches, right? That is in uh, the Lux market itself, and of course. Since uh, the recommendation for Leland Green, you know, with all my recommendation, how why you should be considering CCR freehold, uh, let me show you some of our star buys and cheapest units that we have. For our one bed, you one bedroom unit starts from one point three nine four, right, and it's actually facing the pool. Uh, very very attractive entry price. Uh, uh, freehold CCR one point three plus. You know, even uh, the outskirts are transacting uh, one point three plus. Well, uh, definitely something you can look into and of course we have a very good facing for our one bedroom unit right uh, and of course for our one plus study we're looking at about 1.5 plus again a pool facing unit two bedroom starts from about 1.8 um, million 1.8 plus million and we see PSF um, from as low as $2,700 PSF and look at the maintenance fee uh, it's only 240 for my one bedroom and two bedroom unit size to only two ninety. Now, Linden Green has been so popular, you know, because of um, um, 
the landscaping, the land size, the facilities. Our big units have been so, selling so well. So for those of you who are looking at big units, we, we, we don't have so many, but we have a final few units for the larger units from two plus study all the way to four bedrooms. So if you are looking at something that is uh, on a bigger, larger floor plate, uh, quickly come by and take a look at uh, our remaining uh, choices. So before we end the night, let's take a look um, at one of the fly through to help you understand the beautiful design for Leiden B. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the fly through. Um, before we end tonight's session, I'm going to give you 10 great reasons why you should make it and win your next home or investment. Uh, for one, definitely this Bukit uh, Timah Holland area uh, school zone, right? Uh, we do have choice units, five blocks out of seven, uh, within one kilometers to Nanyang Primary School. Uh, definitely for parents, look out for that. Uh, and of course, over here, the number two reason is we have upcoming master plans, you know, in Orchard and uh, of course the green connection uh, that's high potential for capital appreciation, uh, even Holland Village. And what I really, really like is the three hectare of landscaping, right, equivalent to 24 Olympic size pools. How great is that? And, you know, with, with post-COVID, um, consumers, tenants, they all love big spaces. Uh, definitely, Eden Green has that to offer to all of us. Uh, we have four luxurious pools, right? Uh, we have the grand pool, play pool, lab pool, and even all the uh, spa pools and all. And uh, guess what? We have two pools that are 15 years long, and that is really great. Um, those of you who love the, the botanical gardens, we are only a short five-minute drive away from uh, botanical gardens. And uh, just a quick sharing, we really do have many buyers who bought Leiden Green because of botanical gardens. Um, if you've not been to Leiden Green itself, really come by because uh, whatever fin uh, finishings and specifications that we're using at Leiden Green, uh, definitely designer lifestyle brands that we are using for ultimate modern living. Short drive away from the shopping belt of Orchard, uh, eight minutes walk to Farrow Road MRT. Uh, we have smart home features, and of course, we occupy one of the largest freehold land plot in. Uh, the whole of District 10, uh, close to 320,000 square feet. Uh, really, really hard and rare to come by. Uh, I hope these 10 reasons will uh, be attractive enough for you to come by. And I look forward to seeing you right at the sales gallery on the actual site uh, of Eden Green. And really thank you for joining me this evening. And do contact your preferred next consultant for more information uh, about Eden Green or anything regarding property. Um, if there are any questions at all, please um, type it into the chat box. Uh, we'll just uh, stay behind for a while itself uh, to answer some of the questions if you might have any. If not, thank you very much and have a good 
uh, Monday nights ahead. Thank you, everyone.